Good morning, everyone. I'm Stephanie Haney. It's April 23rd, Thursday, and I have your top headlines for you from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Many of those headlines are related to COVID-19 coronavirus, but we do have some other information that we'll share with you. So stick around to the end and we'll get to some of the more fun stuff. But as we do each day, we will start with the latest numbers from the Ohio Department of Health concerning COVID-19 here in the state of Ohio. As a reminder to everyone, the way the numbers are being reported has been changed. These are not only confirmed positive cases of COVID-19, but they are also probable cases of COVID-19. And these are based on an expanded CDC definition. So the total number of reported cases in the state of Ohio right now is 14,117. Now we've arrived at that new number of cases after we saw a pretty sharp uptick in new cases at the beginning of the week, but that has pretty, dramatic, pretty drastically cut down as well. There were two days in a row where we had in the 1300s of new cases, then we had a day with 800 or so new cases. Yesterday, that was much closer to 400 new cases. So that is on the downtick there, the number of new cases right now in terms of how the numbers are going. The number of deaths also based on that new expanded CDC definition is 610. We have seen a slight rise in the new number of deaths over this past week. We had an increase of 20, an increase of 38, an increase of 48, and then an increase in the 50s to get us to this number today that is 610 deaths. So we will be following up with that at 2 p.m. to let you know how those numbers are changing today. That's when those new numbers come out from the Ohio Department of Health. Here in Ohio, we do have new numbers from the Ohio Department of Jobs and Family Services. There are now nearly 1 million Ohioans who have filed for unemployment here in the state of Ohio in the last five weeks. We saw an additional 109,369 claims of joblessness over the past week. According to data that came out this morning, Ohio now stands at that number of 964,566 people who have filed unemployment claims. The Ohio Department of Job and Family Services said, to put that in perspective, the total of the last five weeks of claims is almost 250,000 more than the combined total of jobless claims for the last two years in the state of Ohio. And that combined total for the last two years in the state of Ohio, of course, not including these claims in the last five weeks, is 715,512. So this is definitely an unprecedented situation as there have been a lot of comparisons to the 2008 recession. We are in a much more extreme financial economic situation for a lot of people than we were back then. State officials say more than $926 million in unemployment compensation has been paid out, but a lot of people are still waiting on that unemployment compensation. Nationwide, there are now more than 26 million people who are unemployed in the country. Now, in order to try and alleviate some of those issues people are having with filing for unemployment here in Ohio, the state has introduced a new system breaking down the days that people are to file for unemployment with certain letters on Sunday, certain letters on Monday, certain letters on Tuesday, and avoiding filing Wednesday through Friday if you can. And we do have that breakdown on WKYC.com, so make sure you check that out if you are one of those people who needs to file for unemployment. That might save you a small headache as you try and get that money that we all desperately need. An Alliance nursing home is now seeing large numbers of COVID-19. Alter Care Alliance is reporting that 15 residents have died due to COVID-19 and dozen others have tested positive. The facility is also saying that 26 of their staff members have been confirmed with COVID-19. Alter Care Alliance says that 47 residents have tested positive over the past several weeks. So to put that in perspective, the facility only has 97 beds. So that's about half of their residents testing positive for COVID-19. Our investigative team with 3 News investigative reporter Rachel Polanski has been doing extensive reporting on the number of COVID-19 cases in nursing homes, trying to get that data from the state. They have put the investigative team, the data that they've been able to come up with on WKYC.com because the state did put information out there, but then pulled that information down. Now this is after inaccuracies were pointed out by our investigative team. So that's been taken down, but we do have the information that our investigative team has come up with on WKYC.com. If you have a family member, a loved one, a friend, if you're interested in learning more about what the situation looks like 
in nursing homes related to COVID-19 here in Ohio and other you know, adult care facilities. The UN is now saying that COVID-19 is nearing a human rights crisis. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said the coronavirus pandemic is a human crisis that is fast becoming a human rights crisis. The UN chief said in a video message today that there is discrimination in the delivery of public services to tackle COVID-19 and there are, quote, structural inequalities that impede access to them, end quote. Guterres also said rising ethno-nationalism, populism, excuse me, authoritarianism, and a pushback against human rights in some countries, the crisis can provide a pretext to adopt repressive measures for purposes unrelated to the pandemic. Guterres also saying the message is clear, people and their rights must be front and center. So basically what Guterres is saying it here is that COVID-19 should not be used as a proxy in order to discriminate against others for any reason, and that people need to have equal access to health care. And we have seen reporting that COVID-19 is disproportionately affecting people of color. So that's something that we'll also be keeping an eye on on WKYC.com. University hospitals will be shutting down several Northeast Ohio emergency rooms this weekend. That's because the UH system has seen a 70% drop in patients at freestanding emergency rooms. Now, this is along with a 50% drop at hospital-based locations. Officials say that people instead are using services like phone services or online services like telemed services where you can virtually conference with a medical professional, and that is for fear out of leaving their home for something that they might think might be non-essential and not wanting to spread COVID-19. So the locations that will be impacted for UH include Avon, Amherst, Broadview Heights, Kent, and Twinsburg. Those emergency room facilities will be suspended beginning Sunday at 7 a.m. I'll give you those places again. Avon, Amherst, Broadview Heights, Kent, and Twinsburg. Now that's starting Sunday at 7 a.m. Now do keep in mind that urgent care and ambulance services will still be available at all locations, but the hospital system is reaching out to state and federal officials to discuss these changes and will also transfer people who need care to other places where they can get the care that they need. Experts say Ohio hospitals overall are losing roughly $42 million a day. This is as costs increase and patients decrease as we deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. It was just yesterday that UH announced that it will be temporarily reducing hours and cutting pay for about 4,100 caregivers that are not directly involved in caring for COVID-19 patients. This is expected to go over a period of 10 weeks. So reduced hours and a cut in pay for at least 10 weeks for those 4,100 caregivers in the UH system. Now, Governor Mike DeWine did say yesterday that elective surgeries can begin to be scheduled again here in Ohio, and that's depending on what the surgery is and how quickly it needs to be done. So that may provide some relief for university hospitals and other hospitals here in the Northeast Ohio area. Target employees are planning a sick out on May 1st. A group called Target Workers Unite says the foot traffic and guest behavior inside stores has been, quote, atrocious since the coronavirus pandemic began. So in a statement on their website, Target Workers Unite say, quote, they do not respect our space. They are not coming to our stores exclusively for essential items, but are occupying our stores out of boredom and for fun. So this is something that has Target employees Concern. So a liaison with the employee activist group told USA Today that safety measures that Target has rolled out are half measures and they haven't done anything to prioritize safety. The company, Target, did share an update on Thursday on the measures that have been put in place to support employees and announced that a $2 an hour temporary wage increase would be extended until May 30th. So we'll be keeping an eye on that, and if that sick out then carries out as planned on May 1st in light of this new update from, com- from Target about their safety procedures that they say that they have put in place and this temporary wage increase. We want to tell you a little bit about our initiative, Three Loves Nurses. So after volunteering to go help in New York City, a Cleveland Clinic nurse is sharing the story of why she volunteered and how it's going. So Nurse Lindsay Fassione said this, I don't know if I should say this, 
but I did not tell my parents that I was coming here until I got here. I was afraid that they would try to stop me. Lindsay is one of 25 Cleveland Clinic healthcare workers that boarded a plane to New York last Friday. They left to volunteer to help COVID-19 patients for a month for four weeks in the city that has been hardest hit here in the US, here in the world actually, with COVID-19 cases and, and deaths. Lindsay told 3 News this, I would say there are actually more people out on the streets in Ohio than there are in New York City, which is crazy to think about. Ohio is very lucky. Cleveland is very lucky that our governor shut things down so fast. They do not understand how lucky they are. New York is very sick right now. She also said that although things are bad now, she believes that people will be much more appreciative for everything that they have after this is over. And we want to thank Lindsay and all of our essential workers for everything that they're doing. They are expected to be back here in about three weeks. They left last Friday. The plan was for them to be at New York Presbyterian Hospital for four weeks. So that leaves three weeks left and we will of course be welcoming them back. Cleveland Clinic did also say if there were a situation where we did need those medical professionals to come back, they would. But thankfully here in Ohio, we did have workers who were able to go and help out in New York. So that's what we did and we're very thankful for that. So thank you very much to those Cleveland Clinic workers and also everyone here on the front lines who is fighting COVID-19 and helping us stop the spread. Some good news for you this weekend. If you want to get outside, I do believe that we do have some nice weather coming at least one of the days this weekend. Akron Stan Hewitt is opening grounds for outdoor garden walks. The grounds will be open on Friday, so visitors will be able to check out those gardens free of charge. The hours for the gardens are Wednesday through Sunday, again, not starting until Friday, so not open today, but Wednesday through Sunday, you can check out the gardens. Now from 8.30 a.m. until 10 a.m., that will only be for senior citizens. From 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m., only for senior citizens. And then from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m., all guests are welcome. Again, that's 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. for all guests. Sean Joyce, who is the president and executive director of the gardens, says that the gardens are now blooming and they are very excited to share the gardens for public walks. Now do keep in mind, only the gardens and the grounds will be open during these free outdoor walks. The manor house and all other buildings, and this is important, including restrooms, will not be open. So the restrooms won't be open, so make sure you go to the bathroom before you go to the garden. And the number of guests permitted on the property will be limited to maintain that safe physical distancing standard that is required in public spaces. Yes, that means that people will need to be at least six feet apart and that will be enforced. Although admission is free, donations will be accepted and Stan Hewitt Gardens is located at 714 North Portage Path. So that's 714 North Portage Path if you want to check that out this weekend. Again, that's open Wednesday through Sunday. Not today, starting on Friday. Also, tonight is the NFL Draft and it's going to look a little bit different. We're going to see a remote NFL Draft for the first time ever. That's kicking off this evening. So you're going to want to make sure you keep checking in with WKYC.com and our WKYC app for our coverage related to the NFL Draft. We'll have analysis coming your way. We'll have your reactions to what happens. We know the Browns have the number 10 pick in the first round tonight. So we are very excited to see what happens there. There's been a whole lot of talk about the fact that we need a left tackle. We need to beef up that offensive line. We need people to protect the people that try to score the touchdowns. But general manager Andrew Barry has said that the draft strategy from the Browns perspective is not about filling a need. It's more about a long term plan. And they look at the draft as a way to sort of fill out the expansion roster, really talking about developing players that might come in to the Browns organization as part of the draft over the next couple days. So we will see how that plays out. We're very excited about that. All right, that's coming up this evening and that'll be all over our website, all over our social media. So keep an eye on that. We've got a great team handling that tonight. So you're going to want to keep an eye on that. Okay. Next up is 3 News Connect. That's at noon. You can see that on 3 News. You can also stream that on WKYC.com and our WKYC app, as well as on Facebook and YouTube. That's with Jay Crawford and our senior health correspondent, Monica Robbins. So answering all your questions about COVID-19 coronavirus and some fun stuff in there too. And then after that, I will be back here at 2 p.m. with your latest information from the Ohio Department of Health as soon as we get those numbers. I'm Stephanie Haney. I will see you back here in a little bit.